continuing with packet three, we have these examples, which we are converting decimal to percent. Remember, that process is to simply move the decimal two places to the right. Now, let's look at solving percent equations using proportions. To do this, we should quickly review proportions. A proportion is just a fancy way of saying equal fractions. So looking at this example, 3 fifths is clearly equal to 6 tenths. You could show it by simplifying. But we can also show fractions are proportional by using the cross product, like we do here. See that? 5 times 6 is 30, and 10 times 3 is 30. Their cross products are equal, so they are proportional. Using this idea, we can solve percent equations knowing that part over the whole equals the percent over 100. Then use the cross product to solve for the unknown. Or a nice easy memory trick is to remember to set up the equation. It's always going to be in the form is over of equals the percent over 100. So let's solve some examples. Reading the example, what is 70% of 80? We can set up the proportion pretty quick by filling in the information we know as seen here. Now using the cross product to solve once we fill in everything. We get the answer n equals 56 once we solve. This means that 56 out of 80 will give you 70%. This next example, what percent of 120 is 90? Setting up the proportion and billing in the given information,
Then solving for the variable, we get n equals 75, which means 90 out of 120 will give you a 75%. This next example, 24 is 20% 20 of what? Setting up the proportion and filling out all the given information. We solve for the unknown and get n equals 120. Which means that 24 out of 120 will give you 20%. Here we will look at a few more examples. These two examples are very similar to the previous ones. We just set up the proportion by filling in the given information and then solve for the variable and done. These examples are a couple of good real life type examples. This first one we're looking for the percent increase on a t-shirt. It makes sense that to find the percent increase, we need to find the difference in the two prices, 10 and 16. Then divide by the original price, which in this case is 10.
In this case, we find that the percent increase ends up being 60%. For this next example, we see that we are trying to find the percent decrease in coffee. It's pretty similar to the last example. Um, it should make sense that the percent decrease is going to be the difference in price, 4 and 3, divided by the original price, which was 4, And what we find is the percent decrease being 25%. So here we are going to look at some basic geometry formulas. The first definition we'll look at is perimeter, which means distance around an object. Notice with this example, we have to figure out a couple of missing values on the top and on the side. Once we figure those out, we can just add all the sides up to get the perimeter. Perimeter is always measured in length. So we use units like inches, feet, yards, meters, etc. The next definition we look at is area, which just means how many square units are covering an area. We use units like square feet, square meters, square miles, dot, dot, dot. In this example, we use the formula for area of a rectangle, which is area equals length times width. Volume 
just an extension of area means how many cubic units are in an object. For volume, we use units like cubic inches, cubic meters, milliliters, ounces, dot, dot, dot. In this example, we are using the basic formula for volume of a box, length times width times height. Here, we will describe the circle. The center of the circle to the edge is called the radius. From the edge of the circle through the center and to the edge again is called the diameter of the circle. circumference of a circle is just the distance around it. Here is the formula for circumference. The symbol here is called pi, which is approximately equal to 3.14. And here is the area of a circle. Here is an example of finding the circumference and area of a circle. For circumference and area, it is important to label the correct units, like centimeters for circumference and square centimeters for area. A couple more basic algebra formulas, simple interest and distance formulas. It's important to read the problem and label all your given information. Principle equals P, which is what you start with.
R is the interest rate in the percent. And T is time, which is usually one for simple interest. Once you label everything, it's pretty easy to plug in the numbers and evaluate. Next example is just using the distance formula. Again, you want to identify all the give or given information and plug that into the formula. Now we will look at some examples of solving formulas for specific variables. Notice all I'm doing is isolating the variable that I want to solve for, which in this case is L. Same with the exam this example. I am just isolating the variable I am asked to solve for, R in this case. And it's the same process for the next two examples as well.
Here are some practice problems.